So that's the number one thing. Audio, Audio cut, out. cut out. Yeah, I, we're back. Okay, cool. It's, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so look, I'm going to read some of the comments here. Bernard, how do you walk into a Illinois casino and get that rush of clean oxygen? Nick, it was, uh, it was Woodwood. So mm -hmm. Woodwood out of Copenhagen. They're dropping their double A series this week, the double A collection. So um, if you're looking for stuff for the summer, like shorts, t-shirts, you know, like the light crew neck, the season, I mean, you're in Virginia, so it may be a little bit hot out there for you, but for us up here in the North where they stay so hot, you know, like you did a crew neck, but I think Woodwood has a definitely a good uh, collection that's dropping this week. So didn't want to put that out there. It's a shop that I've been to. Uh, you know, I, I buy a lot of their garments on online stores. So yeah, check that out if you have a chance. All right, so again, like today in the show, we want to talk about um, just the drops that we have. I'm going to preview the items, get into some of that. And then we're going to get into just some discussion on, like, you know, video games and sneakers. You know, we're streaming on the Twitch app. So Twitch is, you know, um, kind of a platform that we're migrating towards because we believe we believe in it. We think there's, there's scalability there. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's kind of a... It's a, there's a good intersection between gamers and sneaker collectors. So the first, we're going to get into some items. Uh, I just want to preview them. So we're going to do the Fear of God Orange Pulse today. Uh, we're dropping this one uh, first. And then we're going to have the Social Status Jordan 6. Uh, Social Status is a store out of Virginia. Actually, they have some shops on the East Coast. Eight shops, believe I believe, between Pittsburgh, Virginia, Georgia. Uh, it's a cool store. This is from their All-Star game last year. Uh, the Jordan 6 with the cow hair. Then we have the Plum uh, Dunk, the Ko JP Japanese uh, re retro uh, from the Ugly Duckling pack from 2003. Uh, they retro this in February, so we got this one up for today. The Yeezy Beluga, uh, this one came out about a year and a half ago. I really like this one. It's probably my favorite Yeezy 350 um, with the boost sole, so we got that one going. And then we got a Supreme hat. Um, so we're going to get into the first drop for the next 10 minutes. Again, how the bidding works uh, for those new viewers. We're going to release the items in ten, uh, for auction up for grass for 10 minutes. After we uh, feature the item, and I'll talk about it a little bit. If you're in the Twitch app, you can do the bidding on the chat. Uh, and then we start the bid, and then after that we do $25 increments. Uh, it's free shipping. And once we have the highest bid, you know, uh, Johnny from the team will who's running the, the comments section, he will definitely be uh, interacting with you to get your information so we can see that direct link with the password so you can execute that transaction. Uh, all items that don't sell uh, today, we do, we're starting with five items on this particular episode, will be on our uh, online store early next week, okay? So the first item, starting at 10 minutes now, uh, so it's gonna go till about five after. California. Uh, his dad was a baseball player. Uh, he started out in LA as a concert promoter. Um, and from there, he kind of, you know, did his grind, worked his way up, built, you know, his connections. And he started a clothing label called Fear of God. Um, and then he was uh, a member of Donda. If you remember uh, several years ago, Kanye started this uh, creative collective and it spawned, you know, Matthew Williams, Virgil, obviously, Don C., um, and Jerry Lorenzo. So some of those names had a hand in designing uh, the original Yeezy 1, the Nike Yeezy, uh, and the Yeezy 2. So you can see elements of that uh, in this design. You know, it's higher cut, sleek, uh, one polyurethane uh, outsole with the Zoom Air uh, on the bottom, the Zoom Air cushioning. So essentially what this is is a basketball shoe uh, that can also be used as a lifestyle shoe. So um, I really like this design. Uh, I like the quality on it. Um, the insole uh, is perforated, so it's really breathable. If you happen to wear it, it's a higher cut shoe, so you don't always, you always worry about your foot sweating, but the perforation and the mesh upper should help that. Uh, the zip, the zipper in the back, you know, it's like more of like a boot, so it, it's easy to get on. Uh, I really like it, the reflective uh, toe cap, uh, you know, as you're walking down the street, so you can, you know, catch a couple eyes and the minimal lace eyelets. 
uh, make it really sleek. This is a really good shoe. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are. Open, open to hear what the thread thinks about this, the chat thread thinks about this, but um, I think this is a really good one for us to start with. We're starting the bid at this one at 650. Uh, it's a little bit less than kind of the going rate. Uh, again, I think it's a fair fair price for the shoe. It's a size seven. Uh, so yeah, we're starting this one at 650. Uh, I don't know if you know Gabe, the engineer we have, but oftentimes people confuse him with Jerry Lorenzo. <laughs> he has the long curly hair. Uh, you know, he's just out here with the beard. And <laughs> all that. Yo, it, it was uh, All Star Weekend. I got a couple of taps on my shoulder mm -hmm. and, and disappointing like but ah it's not him so at the I height of so him. at the height of the covid you know pandemic like before it became a thing right. people were just grabbing you on the street because they thought you were Jerry Lynn. weekend whenever i found myself in like these uh, little parties and yep. shit uh yeah people like tell me on shoulders look dark and then i'd be like hey and they'd be like oh <laughs> yeah, just, like, hey, oh, yeah, they're like, oh man, like they try to play cool. But they try to play cool. I know. You probably appreciate this shoe. I mean, like I said, I think it's. I've seen yeah, a couple Shadjay. players. Yeah, Shadjay. I've seen a couple players wear this. Um, he was here for All Star Weekend. He dropped it. You know, a you know, a specific color of this one, which went really well. I mean, they've done a lot of different color overlays for this one, color palettes. So I think this one stands out. I mean, it's it's really loud. You know, but. You know, if you're looking for something really uh, that's a statement piece to your collection, I would definitely say the Fear of God one is it. And the orange pulse, it's also a good color. People are saying that it's Someone in the thread said, people thought they people <laughs> thought they hooked up with Jerry Lerner and told they were yeah. gay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope, I hope it uh, worked out for them. Yeah, <laughs> like when, when he said hooked up, I thought, you know, you out here trying to... How does that uh, work? Yeah, you know, I mean, how does that work? Like, if you like, if you're a doppelganger of a celebrity, I'm sure it's happened. And you're out in these streets, yep. and someone taps you on the shoulder, and, and you say, "Hey," and they don't say, "Oh," but they say, "Ooh." Uh, <laughs> how, do you, how do you parlay that into like, you know, what I'm saying, how does that work? I think we gotta ask a, do a doppelganger. We gotta get them on. Okay, we gotta ask a doppelganger <laughs> so, to really find out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, all right, but again, for this first ten minutes, we got about five minutes left. We're doing this. And then, uh, but yeah, then we're going to get into a good guest. You know, I was doing some research on John Gunter, our guest uh, from EA. And, you know, again, if you uh, are, happen to be on Instagram right now, it's the real rewind is his Instagram handle. But really, really interesting dude, you know, like, is a ghostwriter, right? He does music. Uh, he started his own uh, production label in the past couple years. He's had a lot of accolades uh, in Black Enterprise Magazine, and he's been on a, a, a few, a handful of uh, top 40, under 40 lists for you know, emerging entrepreneurs and professionals out here in the game. Um, and in his bio, we were doing some research as a team uh, the past day or so, really getting prepared for this particular show. And it sounds like, you know, he's sounds just like out. He just sounds like he's just out here, you know, just. Trying to trying to get bread on, on all different facets, and which which is kind of like what this group is all about. Uh, we're all hustlers, we're all entrepreneurs, so we're really excited to have him on the show today. And what we're going to talk about with, with John is this intersection between um, you know sneakers and video games, right? Like it seems as if there's a lot of overlap. Um, there's been a bunch of shoes that have dropped in the past couple of years. I mean, if I go back 10, 15 years, there was the EA Sports uh, Delta Force. Back in the Nike Talk days, um, you had the Paul George 2.5s, the PlayStation version that came out last year, the light-up joints. Uh, those are pretty cool. Um, and there's also been some releases recently, and that's one of the questions I'm going to ask for him, is uh, to talk about um, essentially like you know being able to acquire certain shoes and unlocking things into the game. Uh, so I'm really excited to have this conversation, really talk to him about kind of what's happening. Obviously, we've seen Travis Scott on Fortnite. Uh, a couple weeks back, which is really popular. So, you know, he's a, he's a Jordan brand ambassador. So really excited just to see, like, what the next steps of um, the intersection between video games and especially being on the Twitch platform, right? So, like, you know, really us as a team trying to go out here and, you know, get new followers, you know, get new subscribers to our channel and really talk about, you know, 
you know, how we can grow our business on this platform and other platforms that allow live streaming in this pandemic. And like if we think about the next iteration of retail shopping, you know, this is kind of what we're doing. So really excited to hear from him and, you know, kind of what his thoughts are having that as his, uh, as his uh, corporation that he works for. So uh, really excited for that. Um, so yeah, we got about a couple minutes left again on this, uh, this Fear of God 1. Again, this is the, the Orange Pulse uh, version. Uh, can't really get this anywhere, and I'm selling it today. Starting bid for the for the audience is, you know, less than the street value on it. So we're starting at 650 shipped. Uh, so we ship, you know, next day. We try to ship next day, barring any unforeseen circumstances. But, uh, but again, this one comes brand new in box. Um, there is a um, tote bag that comes with it. So it's both, you know, obviously the left and right shoe, but then it comes with a little tote bag that you can use for groceries or you know, carrying the shoes to the gym if you're in the hoop in them or whatever the case may be. So I think all in all, you know, if you talk about quality, you talk about uniqueness and the full package, uh, I think you're going to get that with this particular shoe. So uh, again, starting out with S650 today. Um, so yeah, like again, while we, you know, pivot to the next, um, the next thing, you know, uh, getting prepared for this meeting, another other thing I was looking forward to is really just trying to continue to get feedback from the audience, right? So, uh, you know, what we're gonna begin to do is incorporate other channels into the show. We're gonna start to host different, you know, guests and artists to come through and to kick off our show or to end our show. So if you have any recommendations, if you have any feedback, any, like, any content that you'd like to see, uh, let us know. And again, for those folks that are in the, in the chat, what we would like to have from you is just engagement, right? So if there is something you want to see, if there is something you see on the screen that you want to learn more about, talk more about anything in pop culture or anything that's trending right now, you want us to bounce off as a group, uh, we're, we're totally open to having those discussions. So, you know, feel free to you know, make this channel as much as, as yours it is, as it is ours. So we, we really appreciate that. Yes. So I'm going to close the bidding on the uh, Fear of God and then I'm going to move to the next shoe. Mm -hmm. and af after I kick off the next shoe, it's going to be the Social Status 6, the Jordan 6. After I kick that off, I'm going to give a little preview on it. And then we're going to get John also to rewind on the online and really talk to him about, you know, kind of this intersection between sneakers and video gaming. And just learn from him. You know, he's a really interesting guest. Uh, he has a lot to offer in terms of his craft and you know, kind of what he's trying to build and notoriety from being like that. Not only a person of color, right? And, and in the professional world, but also being a creative and trying to mix those two grounds and, and trying to stay authentic and still progress. So we're really excited to have that conversation with him today. But I'll get right into this social status six. Again, like this is a Jordan Six. Obviously, you know the original model released in 1991 uh, during the Bulls' first championship run. Um, so again, with this one, this particular release specifically for All-Star Game 2019. And this is where social status is located. Uh, so it's a collaboration shoe between the brand, uh, Jordan brand and the, the boutique, the sneaker boutique. Uh, social status is actually black uh, owned. So it's, uh, typically you don't see that when it comes to uh, high-end boutiques. Um, so it's really interesting and really like encouraging to see you know, black owned boutique, especially in, you know, the southeastern part of the country thrive and grow and turn to um, a regional chain. So really like those guys and what they're doing. Um, not only do they do co cool collaborations like this, uh, but they also do their own, you know, clothing line and collaborations with other groups. So a shout out to you if you ever see this content, appreciate, uh, appreciate that. Um, so I'll get into this shoe a little bit. Um, this one's really cool. It's like, uh, like I said, it's a cow hair upper, uh, which is a cool element. It makes it a little bit luxurious. Uh, and it has uh, the premium leather on the inside. Typically, the shoe has a mesh on the inside. Uh, but this one has premium full grain leather, which is interesting on the uh, Jordan 6. It has the ice blue sole uh, with the purple, muds, uh, purple midsole. Uh, if you remember last episode, we were talking with Joe Privet out of Nashville, and he had his reverse infrared 6 uh, that he previewed. So this is a uh, uh, cool that we wanted to piggyback off that uh, along with the with the reptile skin on the, the lateral and medial panel of the shoe and of course Nike here on the back uh, I think this is a cool shoe um, like I said this one is from All-Star Game a couple years ago uh, this one's starting at 200 
which is uh, less than retail. Um, so again, this is a really good deal for you guys. Uh, so if you're into Jordan 6s, if you wear a size 11, want to add something unique to your collection, 200 shipped is what we're starting to bidding at on this one. Uh, and yeah, I mean, like I said, it's 50 bucks less than what it, or what it cost for retail when they released. Uh, so we're giving that to you at a deal today. Uh, but yeah, so while we let that run for the next 10 minutes or so, I did want to spend some time again, like trying to loop in, uh, rewind our guest, John Gunter, for the call today. Um, and we're really excited to have him. You know, we, we're trying to incorporate guests and, and good programming into, you know, the shows that we're doing. So uh, we, we hope that you like the content. And again, there's a feedback button on the, uh, on the bottom of the channel if you, if you want to know. And then obviously, folks, in the chat thread, please feel free to jump in with questions and hit that follow and subscribe button on the channel. Let me pull up my... You said just don't zoom in on the wrong good. Chill out, G. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, G. That's Bernard. You know he's wild. Man. All right, we're gonna get John. Let's yeah, get... let's let's loop him in. All right, let's give this a shot. Let's see. Yes, no man. Might have a little bit of echo. Okay. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. We good? Yeah, we should be good. Can you hear us, John? I can hear you now. Okay. Rewind. Thank you for joining the show, baby. Appreciate your time. No doubt. No doubt. Appreciate you guys for having me. Absolutely. So listen, um, I try to do my best to give you a proper interview. When I was looking at your, your guest sheet with all your accolades, there was a lot of stuff to, you know, to remember. Um, what I what stood out to me is just some of the accolades you received on being, you know, on the top under 40 for 40 lists, especially in the Black Enterprise Magazine, uh, being, you know, kind of pivoting your career in IT security and working at EA. So John Gunter Rewind is what they call him. Like, welcome to the show, fam. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I still am having a little bit of an audio issue, so it's, okay. like, it's kind of choppy. Um, but once again, thanks for having me. I do want to put one disclaimer out. I have to put this disclaimer out before I talk anywhere that um, all of these opinions, anything that I say here, any views are those opinions of my own. They do not re represent electronic arts in any way. Um, yeah. So I do have to give that disclaimer. But, no, I, uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, we all we work in corporate America too. We know we understand the hustle. <laughs> so, we but no, understand. thanks for having me. Um, I, uh, so, so I think look, I caught, I, go ahead. what were you going to say, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, so like I said, I mean, you know, the topic of the show that we wanted to get your point of view on, especially, you know, with your background is this intersection between sneakers and streetwear and video games, right? So it's like, we're starting to see more of this intersection with brands and, you know, celebrities and musicians and artists, you know, how, like, in your the last couple of years, when you've seen this kind of explosion of these of this in particular intersection, what has that been like? You know, working in your space, working in your domain. Um, it's really interesting. Um, so me, I uh, I've, I've been a gamer my whole life, um, and I've also been uh, I guess in into fashion my whole life. Uh, I won't say like I'm a fashionista or anything like that or fashionisto. Um, but I like to get a couple of fits off every once in a while. So it's uh, it, it's always been my favorite thing actually about video game in general is uh, customization, um, character customization, everything around that. So as we start seeing um, brands kind of pivot towards that video games, it's, you know, it's actually not really new. And it's really interesting because I got a package in the mail today. Um, of one of my favorite video games um and i have it right here so this is uh one of the goat video games ever you guys can see yeah, it yeah we can it's, see uh, it cut out from my is green that a gamecube is that a gamecube cartridge? yes <laughs> it is a gamecube cartridge which, um i've got pretty much every video game console that you can imagine here in the south um but def jam fight for new york it's uh one of my favorite video games um, and it actually like brought every piece of the culture together. It's, it's a video game, um, you know, it, it had rap culture in it, but it also had fashion. It was, it's actually one of the first games that implemented fashion in a big way 
where you could go to a store and, you know, they had certain brands like Rock Aware um, and they had, you know, uh, Sean John and stuff and you could wear the clothes and customize your avatar. So it goes back to even, you know, 10, 15 years ago to now where we see the, the 2Ks and we see uh, uh, the men's and even I think uh, now we've got like Need for Speed where we uh, had an Adidas endorsement with that. So. Um, there's Adidas track suits and clothes in it. So it's, uh, I think, I think all three pieces have always been, um, kind of a part of the culture. And now it's, um, kind of, as I think the culture is actually maturing, it's growing up with us, uh, with some of those millennials that are in that age range, um, where we're actually starting to see it. It's starting to be emphasized a little bit more, but, um, you know, music video games and fashion have always went hand in hand um and now we're just kind of starting to see that video games is part of um one of those branches i think um the, what's what's been really interesting especially with what you were talking about those three pillars video games fashion and music you know i think it could be completely different right so oh, like, man. you know for the me audience. like my little brother right we were obviously big into like fighting games but we really went deep with role-playing games right so like the soundtracks from games like final fantasy or xeno uh -huh. Gears, you know all the square enix or squaresoft games back in the day is like where we really went deep um and then i think what really set it off for me when i knew the corner was turning was when parappa the rapper came out like on playstation one <laughs> when that dropped like when it, it started as like a demo it was in with in a demo for like when we actually got our PlayStation one. So then I was like, yep. what is this game? Like what, you know, is you can make beats in the game and all that stuff. So we really when my brother and I went out and got it. And after that, I knew it was a game changer. I knew that I kind of recognized, I mean, it was cliche, you know, but at the end of the day, they were still like giving credit to like what, what represented like our passion around the house. You know what I'm saying? So I agree. It's, it's come, it's come a long way. Definitely. And uh, I think in my space now, that's uh, uh, really what I get to handle a lot. Like I work in the security space. I, I direct the security department. But um, I, on in the interim, like during, you know, my day to day, I also lead our uh, black employee resource group. And a lot of that work um, goes into um, some of those acknowledgments like, uh, you know, um, FIFA, we launched like a racism campaign and uh you know they brought us in to kind of talk about some of those politics around it and uh it often happens with fashion well we'll um we'll bring in a team especially the need for speed team often um and we'll say you know we're going to these areas and these you know where we're racing around new orleans is this what new orleans look like is this how people in new orleans dress and and even now, there, there's people like me and others on those art teams that uh, kind of get to speak up about uh, putting some of that uh, reflection into into the games, um, like you know, like Parappa Rapper, uh, maybe a little more so to just like this feels, you know, it doesn't feel stereotypical anymore. It feels genuine, and it it, it just feels normal in the games now, and it makes sense. Uh, I think that's the biggest part for me now is. Um, when fashion and when endorsements, um, when they when they start crossing over, but they make sense, um, it, it's really perfect. Yeah, I, I mean, interesting. It's, it, that's an interesting you know discussion to have because when I think about the video games, you know, I, I mentioned uh, you mentioned FIFA, right? So FIFA, I know, is EA Sports' most popular game, and that's a mm -hmm. game that's played globally, right? Regardless of where you're from. And I think making sure you have the localized, uh, like aesthetic to it, and making sure that it's like localizing it and it fits or, across is a really tough. That's a really tough, uh, you know, tough putt if you think about it to make sure a game really resonates across languages, across cultures, across continents to to really have the impact on people. Um, and and when I was when I was listening to you talk, I was just thinking when you think about those games like Need for Speed or you think about uh, games like you know, FIFA or, or, or things that, you know, EA really has, how is like the team that will maybe like the design team or the development team might be in a different country. So they develop the aesthetic and, and the, the kind of ethos for the game, perhaps in a different part of the world. But when it translates across you know, to North America or to Europe or to Asia, 
I mean, how, like, is that, like, how do, how do you guys even go about doing that? Like, what's that process like? Yeah, it's actually, it's actually a process that, um, I think every company in this space is trying to get right. Um, it's, uh, it's not really easy and no one has like a one size off answer for it. Um, what we've been doing is, uh, like I talked about, we bring in, we bring in people, um, that, that represent these different diversities and we have just honest discussions about it, you know, and it, it, it's not always someone from the art team. It's someone, you know, from the security team like me, but it, you know, it's also just a, a generalized, you know, standard black guy that comes in and says, this feels right, you know, or this feels wrong. It feels forced. Um, so, uh, we we've seen some interesting things like we um one thing is uh um one of our teams has like uh a team that's based in canada um out in edmonton and then there's a team that's based in california so when you see some of those like um even just like uh the language changes sometimes and um what's normal for what people call shoes and pants those types of things uh, happen. So it, it's definitely a, a work in progress across like all the total gaming industry, but it, we put a lot of work into it. And, you know, Absolutely. A lot of times it's not as simple as and when you look at it, you're like, ah, oh, they probably did this and they say yes and they went with it. Like, no, we get write offs from as many teams as possible to make sure it's authentic. Yes. Yeah, that's deep, man. I mean, that's, like I said, it's tough. You know, it's tough to, one, make it land, and two, to like, because it's like matrixed, right? So like oh. this team in Edmonton has to like build it and get sign off from another team where they may not have representation in Edmonton to the team in the yep. U.S., right? So uh, it's, now kudos to, to you. I mean, like one, for being involved in that employee resource group. Um, you know, anytime, you know, do you give back to the organization and get involved, you know, help bring people along, I think it's, it's a uh, it's a very honorable thing, but especially to have a company like tap into that group, to just like, and and just like have have the awareness to say like, hey, you know, we don't we don't know as well as y'all, so I think yep. you know being having that relationship, having that rapport at a company like that is especially in this in this environment where like you could say or do the wrong thing and it can completely derail yep. the project, right? So um, that's really interesting. Yeah, so, I will say it. Um... No, go ahead. Before you pivot really quick, I, yeah. I will say that it, um, to me, it feels like, um, I, I've got children jumping around. Yeah, I got one downstairs um, too, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it, um, it almost feels like, uh, it feels like a, uh, a duty of mine, uh, sometimes. So I, I feel like I was put in this position to speak up about some of those things. Um, and a lot of people that are in my position, that I see a lot of my peers that, um, I either work with or in the industry. Um, a lot of times we do feel like, you know, like in any industry, like it, it's our duty to be at that point and speak up and um, make those changes to make better product and also to, you know, save the company sometimes. And we had, um, obviously you guys are pretty aware we had an issue with Madden, you know, two years ago that uh, kind of shook the company and also shook the culture around that where, you know, it could have been avoided if, we to talk to you know some of our employees before we made some of those decisions. Yeah. Look, like I was saying, you know, when you're at the top or when you're in that position of you got a ton of eyes on you, you know, there's always going to be somebody that's going to want to take you down, right? So like, I think um, you know, doing your due diligence culturally to make sure things land appropriately, uh, especially when you have, like I mentioned, FIFA is a great example. It's a game that you know, is transcendent across cultures, transcendent across ethnicities and that type of stuff. So making sure that, you know, the players, the, the avatars, like the, the way the wording, the music, the way the crowd responds is on point and, and is really indicative of that, uh, indicative of that group without tripping over the goal line is, is a massive, is a massive deal. So, you know, like I said, I, I'm well aware of how, how complicated that is. Uh, one other thing I want to talk to you about we'll have, while we're on the topic of around like corporations and day jobs, you know, being like uh, kind of how you started the call, like letting everyone know like your ideas, your, your point of view is not, is our views of your own, not that of EA Sports. So being, you know, a person that works at a corporation and, 
is also an entrepreneur and is also an artist, right? When you have to wear all those hats, perhaps all in one day, and you have to, you know, get on camera, you get on, you know, social media, you're out there, and you want to share your craft, you want to share your knowledge. How do you? What advice do you have, you know, to in terms of towing that line or making sure that you can be authentic, but also, yeah. you know, stay in scope of kind of like your your, you know, how you bring money home for your your kids and whatnot. So I'm really curious about that. Yeah, I, I think I approach it a little differently than most people would. And um, my advice is just like, uh, it, it's really around honesty and um, completely being genuine. Um, when I when I interview for my position, um, you know, one of the first things that, you know, I talk to my boss, who's the vice president of the company is, um, you know, the vice president of uh, enterprise security is, you know, that I rap, I, you know, that's something that I do. I'm completely honest with people. And, you know, when I go in the studios, I tell people like, Hey, you know, I work for EA video games. And so, um, I'm pretty transparent across like all kind of notions. Um, for me that, that, that makes everything work because I don't, you know, I don't feel a certain way. I don't have to, you know, uh, appropriate myself and uh, certain situations. And I also don't have to like hide, you know, there's some people that have like, I, I hide this side of my life from everyone that I work with, or, you know, there, there's still professional aspects of things, but um, my life's kind of open book to everyone um, in that aspect, whether it's work or whether, you know, it's my friends and, um, you know, and I had run a father style blog, but um, even in that it's, it's genuine that, you know, fathers aren't, these extremely amazing people on IG every day and they're throwing their kids up like I drink, I party, you know, I swear. Like, right. um, those, those are just all genuine things about me, myself. And uh, it allows me to be comfortable. Um, and that's, that's just kind of how I handle it is, you know, I'm a gamer too. I'm, you know, I'm a rapper, I'm a gamer, I'm whatever. I'm just John and I'm comfortable being that at all, at all times. I mean, rappers play games too, right? Exactly. So I mean, you know, they gotta, <laughs> they gotta, they gotta try to get that. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna pause for one second. I'm gonna introduce this next product that we have to introduce that. But I do want to get back to you and ask, ask you a few more questions. So bear with me for a moment. I think the next one we have is the plums. So again, for the guests, I'm gonna brief intro on this one. This is nothing new. This is a plum. Okay, should be good. Should be good. We're back. Cool. We're back, we're back, we're back. All right, we back. All right. So, since we still, we flip back to to John. I want to talk about. Uh, since we still, we're back. We're back. You need need that on your end. Oh my bad. All right. So we so we got the split screen up. Yeah, going back to this All right, cool. So, um, so John, while we pull you back up on the on the overlay here, just another question I have for you, um, you know, specifically related to sneakers and video games. Okay, so what I've noticed earlier in the in the show, we were talking about just some some models that I remember from several years ago. They did the EA Sports Delta Force. Which I think was a cool shoe okay. back in the in the early two thousands. Yeah. That was a cool one. Um, but they've also started to do certain things where, when shoes release, if you have if you gain access to the shoe, it yeah. can unlock something in the game. Um, do yeah. you think that we're gonna see more of that? Like, you know, they they've done the Sonic shoe that they had from Mizuno and some other things. So I'm like, 
curious what like the future of that intersection between gaming and sneakers looks like based on what you might be able to share with us today. Yeah, I, um, I think that that's definitely the future, future state. I, uh, I, I think 2K has something really great going right now with their shoe release. Um, they've got a couple of uh, partnerships with like the sneakers app where if you do a couple of things in game, um, it's actually kind of difficult. Um, if you do a couple of things in game, then you get a code basically for, for Nike um, raffle. Um, I, I, I think we'll continue to see stuff like that um, just because it, it's innovative and we're always looking for kind of creative ways to drop shoes also like we, you know we've seen with like the last band and uh even we actually uh nike actually did a shock drop of uh all of the stranger things uh the whole stranger things collection during e3 uh last june um during the e3 gaming convention so um i think we'll we'll keep seeing things like that uh pop up just um because once again that intersect is just it's too perfect for t too many aspects it really is on multiple fronts, right? I think like as a, as a group, what we kind of talk about is, you know, what does sneaker Twitch look like, right? What, what does that yeah. look like? You know, how do you tap into that? Um, but more importantly, it's like, you know, when you think about something like Stranger Things, like that's, that's a, a show that's transcendent, right? It, it, it's relevant mm -hmm. in a bunch of different lanes. And if you think about the era that they're shooting from, that late, that late 80s era, and just a lot of the different, you know, cool models that were out at that time uh, when a lot of us that are now, you know, are kind of a little bit older and, you know, again, starting our own businesses we're wearing and playing these games. I think it's, it's really interesting. So you mentioned E3, like yeah. what is, you've been to E3, like what's that like? Yeah. So my first E3 was actually uh, last summer. I, I was slave to go this summer. Um, obviously the virus uh, shut down some things. Um, and it, it was amazing. Uh, E3 was like a dream come true for me when I was a kid. I always said like, man, you know, I tell my nephew like, what if we could go to E3? Like, what if we could go to E3? Like, we'd always joke around, you know, how kids say like, that's my car when they're outside. Like, that was like my dream state. It was like, what if one day someone just dropped off free tickets to E3? And I remember like four or so years ago, they offered, they finally opened it up to the public and they had public tickets. And they were like $2,000 or something. Oof. And I couldn't afford it at all. Like I, I, I waited in the line just in case it was like a miracle or something. And the line was super long. And I knew I couldn't afford it. And I actually didn't even get to purchase it anyway. Um, and then last year, you know, I got to go for free. And it was, uh, it was, it was super awesome. I, uh, I met a bunch of cool people. Uh, I, uh, I actually uh, got to kick it with RDC World. Um, and we actually talked about future partnerships with EA. Um, they're, they're actually a partner with us now. Um, and uh, T.O., there were just celebrities everywhere. I got to meet uh, New Day. That was probably one of the highlights of it. Um, we played Apex Legends against the New Day. And then, you know, we got the autographs. I got the whole Kofi's WWE title at the time. He's the champ. Um, and uh, I got to play some of my favorite games. It was, it was right before Borderlands 3, Gears of War 5 came out. Um, and we played, we played those like crazy. I, I got to play Gears for a long time. So it was, it was a dream come true. Like I, I loved everything about it. And actually, while we kind of talk about fashion in that aspect, uh, Gears of War had been like a uh, bait collection that, that they released at E3 at, at the same time. Oh, that's insane. Tell me about that. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I got, I got a couple of pieces from it. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, speaking of like fashion and games, again, going back to that, I think that we didn't spend a ton of time on that. You know, before pre-show, we were talking about uh, Animal Crossing and like, yeah. you know, customization you can do not only to your, your island, not only the customization you can do to place your buildings and the layout and what, you know, you know, fruit and stuff you grow on the island, but, you know, what you can do to your avatar and like what you can do in terms of customizing their outfits, right? So... Um, you know, I got a couple of my friends, a couple of my homies uh, that, you know, we, we talk about Animal Crossing and we, you know, we have that discussion. But like the, op, you know, I've been even designing my own like shop stuff, like things were specific to my brand, things specific to like my crew line that we work on. Uh, and that's what like my guy wears. So uh, interesting, like 
do you like so that in particular like having full custom customization in your in the garments of your avatar what shoes are wearing that has to be the future right i mean that's that's really a competitive yeah. advantage you know yeah that's um to me uh that's that's the euphoria like that that's the dream state right there if every game that we get we can fully customize our avatar how he looks how he walks does all of that you know the gta um type of and then we can outfit them fully i i see that as the future for every single game like you know there are games that need a specific character for things you know like it, the character has to look like this to tell the story but outside of that any 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 game that doesn't care about the character i think should have that aspect um and like i told you pre-show animal crossing is my favorite video game that ever existed it's number one on the list and uh I, I think like a lot of people don't rule in how many fits you can get off an Animal Crossing. Oh like God. they're worried yeah, about right. customizing the house, everything. The first thing I do every single time I play Animal Crossing, is I walk upstairs to my closet, I put on a new outfit for the day and I go fishing. So I, I, yeah, I, I think it's right there. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, like I, I'm just like, you know, I mean, I was never really like, uh, I never played the previous versions of Animal Crossing. So like one of my homeboys had put me on, I saw it, you know, and one of my homeboys say, Hey, you got to get it specifically for the customization piece. So, but like going back to what you were saying, like every character would be fully customizable uh, is, is, is Twitch or is like the, uh, video game internet ready for a black link. I mean, cause if we could fully customize game, like our games, right. And I'm a big, you know, Zelda head like are they really ready for a black link though like there's no black characters in the game so like if we could customize that like i don't know yeah what would that be like so it it's interesting whenever a company has made a main protagonist that you can't change that you can't customize be black um i i, I specifically think of like the message boards days when grand theft auto san andreas came out um and san andreas once again it was you know it was fitting it made perfect sense for the culture but like people went nuts people went nuts when they had the idea of having a black character like i remember reading on the message boards all this racist stuff and i would you know i was elated at finally having a black gta character and it's uh it's things like that that like you don't realize what other people you're missing when you're you know you're not being inclusive and uh i think for like a black link i think we're totally ready for a black link. Like, ready, <laughs> I, think, I think i think link should should be black already but... it should be black. i mean instead of that long <laughs> instead of that long elf hat it would be like the long green durag yeah like a cape <laughs> like a, the tupac like the tupac beanie yeah like the tupac beanie it, i think he should be black already <laughs> Well, we got a question. Way, we got a, we got a question. We got a question from the chat. <laughs> uh, someone said um, they asked you what your turnip prices are in Animal Crossing. Right now, I don't know what turnip prices are. I didn't look. I haven't booted today because when I got off work, I got ready for this. Um, but uh, I did catch some really good turnip sales. Like two weeks ago, I bought turnips for sixty-five bells, wow. and uh, I flipped them for one hundred and seven bells. Um, so. It was it was a good stock market day that day. You get stock market. Um, <laughs> no, so like for me, like I've I've taken like I've I've only been able to buy turnips the past three Saturdays, Sundays past mm. three Sundays, Sunday. and okay. I've taken L's each time, right? I yeah. like What I learned from one of my homies, <laughs> Bernard said steal. <laughs> he said you got to steal no <laughs> prices, but like. Um, you know, for me, I've taken L's, right? So like, what I learned yeah. is you can, the price each day changes in the morning and the afternoon, so. Yeah, there's two prices now. See, I didn't know and there's that. Actually, there's actually, um, there's a place called Nookazon, which is Amazon for Animal Crossing now. Okay. Um, if you go to nookazon.com, it's, uh, they actually have like a stock market where uh, people will tell you the prices of their turnips uh, during the day, and you can like link up with them, visit them and sell your, so your turnips there now. So. Yeah, see, I need to step my game up, man, because uh, my, <laughs> like, I was buying turnips for like 101. 
And then, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then like the next two days would be like 85. So I'm like, I'm, I'm already down. And I'm spending like 30,000 30, bells on turnips. So it's not a good look, you know. I'm out here. Does it reflect uh, like who you are financially as a person? Like Animal Crossing, is that okay? No, it, it's not necessarily. <laughs> are you trying to get the rarest turnips? <laughs> no, but, it, but it's interesting. Like here, here's the thing. As, as, we talk about, as we talk about shoes, right, and like a lot of what we have here going right now, and again, the last item we're going to get to is this Yeezy 350. Uh, so we're starting that one at 580. Um, and we'll let that run for the next 10 minutes. It's the, it's the Beluga. But when we talk about what I'm doing right now, having you here as a guest rewind, is I'm like reselling items, right? So I'm, I'm a curator of things that I know that are going to be cool or have some value, and I'll just obtain them. Then I'll turn around and try to make a profit on it. So when you think about that and using that like as a, a kind of a, uh, an example of like the selling bells on, on Animal Crossing. It's not really it's not really different. It's finding that it's finding the right price. It's knowing the price. It's knowing the market, mm -hmm. and then being able to find the appropriate time to let things go. Yep. So as a guest of ours on the show, you know, being a person that's in the shoes, I looked at your I looked at your profile. Did my homework. Like, yeah. What um like if you know if you if you're gonna get like an item like are you more of like a keep and wear and, and to keep on the sneakers you burn them down or do you do you look to make a profit on them yeah i'm i'm not a reseller um i think i've probably sold two pair ever uh, i wear my shoes um that that's just always been me i get shoes to wear them i get shoes for, i get shoes for fit uh speaking of uh those social status sixes um, I got those. They're, they're actually amazing. I know the price tag is high when they release, and a lot of people kind of just let them go. Um, but those social status sixes, the quality is actually really, really nice on there. Some of my favorite shoes, uh, some of my favorite mics, actually. Um, and so I am, um, I'm a sucker, <laughs> I'm a sucker for Nike Air. So I'm a, I'm a Nike head. I wear chains that excite the feds. Um, and so I feel you. I, uh, everything I have is Nike. Um, I really started the, like, I used to only wear uh, Jordan 1s because they had a swoosh. Um, and so I've been wearing a lot of actual Jordans because they, they've been retro on with the Nike Air. So I have probably every pair. I think I don't have an 88. And there's a couple of, uh, well, I don't have any twos, but there's a couple of, uh, there's a pair of sixes or so. But pretty much every um, mic with Nike Air. That's uh, that's mine. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about that a couple episodes ago. Like, if it doesn't have Nike on the back of like a, a OG release, right? Then I'm not going with it. Yeah, so, like, I remember you saying that. Jordan yeah. threes, fours, five, yeah. sixes. You know, those are the ones that got to have Nike on the back. Um, yeah, it's a no for me. So you talked about Jordan Nike ones, either. right? Jordan ones and Travis Scott. You know, and like what he did with yeah. Fortnite. Um, and like they, you know, recreated a game, you know, his shoes in the game. Like, do you think that, like we talked about the innovation of shoes, uh, the, you know, the kind of innovation of shoes in the video games. Like, do you think that, do you think that that would be like the artist selling out, right? So like, I'm, 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 I'm asking you as a musician, right? You write music mm -hmm. and you also work for a video game company and you're also an entrepreneur. So if you look across, if you wear all those hats, you think about mm -hmm. like a, someone like a Travis Scott, and again, it's a really bad example because he is such a world-renowned artist. <laughs> but like, you know, performing in a video game, how does yeah. the artist, when they think about like their craft and being authentic to their craft, how do they mentally get past that or see beyond it? Is it strictly the dollars, or is there some like creative, artistic approach to doing a concert, mini concert in a video game? Yeah. So I think it. Uh... It, it definitely boils down to the artist, you know, um, people are motivated by different things. People are, you know, quote unquote, artists for money, um, which kind of doesn't, to me, that's an oxymoron, you know, you can't really be an artist for money, you know. Um, but uh, I, I want to say it's, sell, it, it's selling out. I, I would say I, I, I push the line of selling out when it doesn't make sense, when it, you know, when it's off brand, it, it doesn't fit. Um, a few, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge Fortnite player, uh, but I do play, um, and the concert was amazing. Like, you know, it, it was perfect. It, it's crazy. Uh, it, it, it was exactly Travis Scott, you know, it was exactly, you know, that's a big part of Travis Scott's fan base. Um, it worked. And then, you know, 
the the same with like uh, 2K. 2K has the Travis Scott ones in there also. But uh, another thing that 2K did uh, a couple of years ago were they had uh, celebrity guest DJs on like uh, a Saturday night where they uh, have like the neon light games or whatever. They had Future, they had Snoop, you know, come in and DJ for a time. And that, once again, it made sense and it kind of, uh, it worked. And you, I, I think when it gets to a point where it's like, we're forcing things now um, and it, it's not on brand, that's when it, that's when it becomes, you know, it, it, you're doing it for the coin. It's selling out, you know, kudos to you for getting the coin, but uh, it's just, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. I think that's fair. If I use that same lens that you shared for an artist selling out, when it comes to, again, and I, I did my homework on you, like you, you write music and sometimes you write music for other people. So when you talk about an artist and their craft and, and wanting to like create music, when you, when, if, if I were an artist and I reached out to another artist like yourself to like give me perhaps music that I couldn't come up with for what I'm going for, would you consider yeah. that selling out or, or is that more, you know, I'm just curious. Like, I think there's... Oh, there's definitely, there's... definitely. So, um, the writing industry is, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's full of NDAs and a lot of conversations that I can't have when I want to. Um, but I would say that, um, once again, there's a, there's a difference when it's organic and when it's genuine and when it's, uh, you know, there's a difference when someone's coming to me and saying, I, I don't have the skill to do this. I want you to do it, you know, because at that point it becomes, I don't even consider the person selling out. I just, it, you know, it's a point of sale yeah. transact, you know, yeah, like, it's like somebody, you know, somebody writing your resume or somebody, you know, you're somebody doing something. You're a professional. I want you to do it for me because I can't do it. Um, but some of my favorite interactions have been, you know, organic writing with other artists that say, like, I've got this topic, I've got, you know, I've got this idea, but I don't know how to put it into words the correct way. Let's let's bounce ideas off each other, see if you can get me going or see it, you know, okay. see if this works for you, you know, because then it comes back to the creative writing process. And so now it's you know, saying it's organic. We're both still, you know, we're both still creating. We're both still pushing our art, right. and uh, those those have been kind of some of my favorite relationships when it's when it's purely organic, um, and it's just it's just getting over the roadblock because, I mean, we all need that in every aspect of the job, you know. Absolutely, and then I, I think with that, right? You know, there's a few. I know there's many artists that do what you're talking about, and there's always that that line of, you know, the, the purists, when they think about emceeing and like, you know, being a, a true lyricist and not, and just relying on what's what's innate in you, what's in your head versus that collaborative process, which I think is more aligned to where we are as a society today. We're highly collaborative, like here, we're working on live stream, trying to, you know, get a channel going and, and you know, brands going and that type of stuff. So that's collaborative. So why, I don't think, why does it have to stop at music, right? Yep. And I think, I think really music is, um, it's hugely collaborative. Like it, 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 it makes the most sense and the best music when people come together because it's, uh, that's where you get, it, it's just like, uh, you know, it's just like writing a thesis or something, you know, <laughs> like, it, it's like writing, writing a paper where you, you, you pull from different references is you're pulling from different sounds, you're pulling from different energies, you're pulling from just different ideas all together. And um, most of the best music that has ever been made have been collaborative efforts. And, you know, it may not have been a person, you know, it may have been one, have been one person writing a song, but then there, you know, there's somebody that wrote the bridge. There's somebody that made that hook. There's somebody that engineered it perfectly. So I, I, I think music at its core is, is collaboration. Um, that, that's what it's built on. Definitely. Well, look, man, uh, we really appreciate you stopping by the show. Mm -hmm. um, you dropped a ton of gems for us today. A lot of things to think about. Uh, again, for those that are watching on Twitch, The Real Rewind on Instagram, John Gunter, okay. also known as Rewind, uh, works for EA, but is also a musician and entrepreneur himself, has a lot of different accolades out there. So please, if you're on Twitch or on our stream, 
follow this man. He has a lot of cool things to say. We hope to have you back, John, at some point in the near future. Definitely. Uh, but again, just Definitely. keep just keep inspiring us. We really appreciate your time. Definitely. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Um, uh, I appreciate it. Um, one other thing I wanted to shout out is uh, my Twitch and my mixer is uh, the mediocre gamer. Uh, two E's. Everything else is spelled normal. Um, it's just me playing games at a mediocre level. Um, but thank you guys again. Um, it's always love, and I appreciate it. I always love. I mean, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Definitely. Thank you. All right. So while we switch to the last portion of the show, we did want to, again, just really thank John for coming out. Um, you know, he has a lot of interesting things to say. He's a really dynamic person. We hope to have him back. Uh, but again, I mean, like, it, it seems like, you know, Twitch is the place to be, right? You got all these entrepreneurs, all these creatives, and, and the connecting dot is, is gaming. The connecting dot is this, this subculture and streetwear and all this stuff that we're trying to do. So, uh, you know, we, we hope that this channel continues to grow, and we appreciate those of you that are still watching. We just ask that you continue to spread the word for us. Uh, hit that follow button. Hit that subscribe button at the top if you have Amazon Prime. You know, you can definitely get a free sub for us. That helps us keep the channel going. And then on the channel, we also have a feedback button. So if there are things that you would like to see in the show, topics that you want us to talk about, guests that you want us to try to get or, or themes, or if there are specific items that you want to see us sell more of or less of or, or whatever the case may be, feel free to let us know. You know, hit us up in the feedback box on the channel. Hit us up on Instagram. And you can also send us a whisper on Twitch. Before we get into the last item, uh, I'm going to just kick off this item. It's something that we tried to sell the other day. And again, it's a, it's a massive steal, so I wanted to bring it up again uh, because I would hate to have it sit in the summer. It's about to be summer. I would hate to have it sit in our in our inventory. But it's this uh, it's this Supreme Gore-Tex cap. Again, this is a, a ripstop cap, uh, so it tightens in the back, uh, fully water and weatherproof on the Gore-Tex piece on this brand new with tags. Again, we're starting this one at 200. Uh, this is a hat that sells for about 250 on the aftermarket, um, but we're selling it for 200 because I think it's the right thing to do. And I really would love to see somebody in this hat. Um, but this is the, you know, Supreme Box logo Gore-Tex hat. This one came out um, earlier this year. So we're gonna let that one run for the next 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna give you guys a preview of what we got going on the rest of this week. So tomorrow, you? <laughs> tomorrow, we have Niran, a uh, homie of mine, he's from uh, Toronto, Canada. Uh, he's going to be stopping in and, and talking about his brand, Hidden Material. They're doing some really, really cool things. And like, I think why that's an interesting discussion is because he talks about the hidden materials or the hidden messages and a lot of these things within streetwear and design. So I'm really interested to talk about that. Uh, and then on Saturday afternoon, we have Kim Lai from Los Angeles. She'll be joining the show. Uh, and she's gonna really be talking about mental health, like how you stay, you know, mentally health during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Kim, you know, I worked with her in the past. I worked with her in the past on a brand. We uh, worked with another, our, another one of our homies who was actually a guest the other day, Joe. Uh, we started a, a shoe company. Um, so, you know, really good history there. She's a really good woman. Uh, you know, nuggets to drop. So we hope that you guys, you know, tune in and check in for these shows that we got going the rest of this week, tomorrow and Saturday. Um, but in the meantime, again, like we appreciate, uh, we appreciate your, your time. We appreciate the follows. We appreciate the subscriptions it means a lot and continue to share feedback, uh, as we continue to grow. Right. Awesome. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. With those questions. Yeah. Diane Sawyer. Hey, hey man, I'm out here, baby. I'm just <laughs> like, it happen, you know what I'm saying? I'm